Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here on site at the Black Hat Security Conference uh, in Las Vegas. I'm here with Emily uh, Tez. Yes. Uh, you are the field CTO for Veeam. I am. Yeah, just a quick bio on yourself. How long you've been with Veeam, and uh, what does that job entail? Absolutely. So I've been with Veeam for about 10 years in October. So quite the long time. You could say I'm part of the furniture now. At this That's point. why you're green. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I wear the green jacket everywhere. I have to represent. Um, but really, my job is to uh, help to develop product content, lead with thought leadership, have conversations with customers all over the world. And I mean, I'm sure you've seen some of my product demos on the Veeam website. Yeah. Get to do really great meetings like you, the analyst summits, right? So, so a lot of it is just going around and ensuring that you know Veeam is being broadcast everywhere. And uh, what are you doing here at Black Hat? What are you hoping to learn? I'm really hoping to learn about everybody's BCDR uh, strategies when it comes to data resiliency, mostly around security, right? So yeah. that's what we're here to learn about today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's uh, uh, let's talk about data resiliency and and, and uh, drive, diving down a little bit deeper in that. Now, we've had some recent news lately, uh, you know, with CrowdStrike and then some stuff happened at the Paris Olympics that weren't really security related, I mean, kind of physical security, software-ish, but it's brought data resiliency, I think, back into the limelight and uh, certainly in the focus of CIOs. What are customers telling you about how they're thinking about data resiliency? Absolutely. So I think for number one, right, July 19th is a very important day. I think for a lot of people, if you had a DR plan, it was definitely tested that day yeah. if you were a CrowdStrike customer. So it's really coming into a line to understand, you know, are we doing everything that we can to ensure business continuity around our disaster recovery planning? Are we doing everything we can to test and ensure that we are validating that those plans are going to work when we need them the most? So really, it's just understanding, you know, what are some of the tools and techniques that we could be utilizing to be better ensure that we are going to be protected? Yeah, and are customers doing that? think or are they we're, we're our most customers are they pretty good would you, what kind of letter grade would you give most of them i think for yeah. most customers depending on where you're at right they're, they're all over the place yeah. so it really just does depend <laughs> yeah and uh, now you've had some recent news in the area of data resiliency uh, i think recently you had an announcement with um uh, with Microsoft, uh, so we're in their uh, 365. So can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So six days ago, we just announced that we are, well, the, number one, we're in this five-year partnership with Microsoft to co-develop technology, right, and build solutions jointly together for our customers. So six days ago, we just recently announced our newest integration with M365 backup storage. So being able to allow customers that we have breadth and depth support up for M365 solutions, but being able to integrate that with their backup storage within M365. So joint uh, developing the different APIs that we have with Microsoft and giving customers speed and scale flexibility. And what I like about that is I think it's a good reminder for customers that just because it's a SaaS app, doesn't mean it's always being backed up, right? Correct. In fact, I think in the terms and conditions for Microsoft, Salesforce, the other uh, big SaaS app, it actually tells you that is a joint uh, shared responsibility. Absolutely, it's yeah. a shared responsibility model. It's your yeah. data, you own it, you need to do your due diligence and actually protect it. Yeah, so don't be fooled just because you're in the cloud doesn't mean you're always backed up. Yes. And uh, you also had some news with Splunk, and uh, can you tell me about that? We did. So uh, as part of our new security strategy and our security alliance that we have uh, with Splunk, we just announced a new Splunk app, so that's available to download today. Yeah. Uh, and with that comes some additional capabilities of being able to integrate deeper with Splunk, giving them access to a dashboard within Splunk to understand your Veeam events, what's happening within the Veeam data platform itself, so that way your security teams and the backup teams can work work closer together when it comes to identifying different types of compromises and threats. Yeah, now when I think of Splunk, I think of them as uh, also an observability company. Is there yes. an overlap between what you do and their observability? Not at all. I think, if anything, Splunk yeah. is able to leverage some of the things that we're looking at from a data uh, protection standpoint and be able to bring that into the forefront into the security realm. Okay. And uh, the last topic I wanted to talk about um, was what's going on over at Broadcom and VMware. I think it's uh, it's been an interesting, I'd say interesting uh, year or so. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it was at last year's VMware Explorer where Hawk Tan stood up on stage and said nothing would change for VMware customers. But of course, as we know, everything's changed. And so uh, VMware customers are now looking for alternatives. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I think one of the things Veeam does well is data movement. Absolutely. Right? And so talk about that and how customers are using you uh, to help them with the Broadcom strategy. Yeah, absolutely. So number one, we've always talked about from Veeam is data freedom, right? Yeah. Having that portability to be able to move your data to and from wherever it goes. Uh, Broadcom's obviously been one of the number one partners for Veeam, and that's not going to be changing anytime soon. Um, but it's just helping those customers as they're in this kind of pivot point of deciding where they want to go from a technology standpoint, knowing that their backup vendor, their SLAs, everything that they put into work to ensure that they have true business continuity and disaster recovery doesn't have to change so drastically if they decide to move to another hypervisor platform or if they decide to move to the cloud. As we all know, the cloud yeah. had a big impact, right, seven years ago where everybody said that they yeah. were going to go cloud first. So really, we just want to be in that option of giving customers that freedom of choice to say, no matter where you guys decide to go, Freedom Reem is there to protect and ensure you have. Yeah, and I think if there's uh, any lesson we learned on, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it was don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yes. Right? And so the way you can do that that is by having better data freedom. And so Absolutely. if Veeam can provide that, that's great. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add? No, that was yeah. great. Thank you so much for having okay, me. Okay, well, thank you very much for the uh, primer here on, uh, on um, um, data resiliency, obviously top of mind for a lot of companies today. So yeah. uh, so anyways, Emily, thanks for joining me. Thank I'm Pat Family from Veeam. I'm Zia Scaravalo from ZK Research saying thanks for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on my next episode of Zcast.